So is this the end of the Colorado River? It was, yeah. Historically, this was the end of the Colorado River. Today, I mean, the river ends basically at the border with the US and Mexico, because all of the water is pulled out along the way. And how, how wide would the, um, the Colorado have been at this point? Like, would this whole thing be, be filled? Yes. Like, wow. Yeah, so most of the people in the US have no idea. They don't know yeah, that this know until we iconic it out. river of the West, the Colorado River, does not reach the sea, and it does not reach its delta, and that this whole area has been mm -hmm. extremely degraded. Colorado's modern notoriety stems not from its wild rapids and plunging canyons, but from the fact that it is the most legislated, most debated, and most litigated river in the entire world. It also has more people, more industry, and a more significant economy dependent on it than any comparable river in the world. If the Colorado River suddenly stopped flowing, you would have four years of carryover capacity in the reservoirs before you had to evacuate most of Southern California, Arizona, and a good portion of Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. The river system provides over half the water of greater Los Angeles, San Diego, and Phoenix. It grows much of America's domestic production of fresh winter vegetables. It illuminates the neon city of Las Vegas, whose annual income is one-fourth the entire gross national product of Egypt, the only other place on Earth where so many people are so helplessly dependent on one river's flow. I'm Taylor, and we are local natives. We met when we were kids, and we've been playing for over half our lives together now. I've been going down, down into the river. California is a big influence on our sound and our identity as local natives. We all live in Los Angeles, where there is this water scarcity, and that impacts our lives every single day. So when we had the chance to follow the Colorado River and find out all the hundreds of factors that are going into this water crisis, we just immediately jumped at that. We pride ourselves on being a West Coast band. We just got this amazing opportunity presented to us, and there's a few different options. We were all really drawn to the Colorado River. So we took a van down to Colorado where we ran into the dead. Took we knew the that there was a drought. We knew we had to do something about it, but I don't think we knew the complexities of what's going on and why things are the way they are. Being on this trip allowed us to talk to people outside of our bubble and to just get some different perspective on things. The issue of water conservation can be very political. It's like the canyon and people are on either side, but it's such an issue for everyone, no matter what side you're on. Living in Los Angeles, where our main source of water is the Colorado River, this opportunity seemed like a no-brainer. I didn't really have a definitive expectation of what this was gonna be, but it definitely surpassed anything that I thought it would be.
sunshine. The first day we met with Tracy from the NRDC and she kind of gave us this nice overview of just generally what's going on with water. Water scarcity is a huge issue globally, but California is the perfect place to start to examine this problem. There's a large and growing gap between the water that's made available by nature and the water that we use in our homes, in our businesses, and on our farms. California is in the sixth year of the worst, most epic drought we've ever experienced in modern history. Add to that a growing population and climate change that is gonna dramatically reduce the amount of water that we have available. So really gonna have to do a lot more with a lot less. Because the trip was focused on the Colorado River, we decided to split up into two groups to try and cover as much ground as possible. Matt and Ryan and Nick ended up going south to kind of see how the water was being used, where it ends up down there. And then Taylor and myself went up north to see where the water comes from. Our first stop was the Antelope Canyon, which is this vast labyrinth carved out by the Colorado River. Meeting up with Lionel Big Thumb, whose family and ancestry has inhabited the area for long, long before anybody else came through. I think we get a private tour of the canyon and he's gonna teach us about it. Thanks so much, Lionel, for taking yeah. us around your your land and all this place. So you said that it's been 30 years of drought here? We've been in a yep. 30 year, 30 plus years we've been in a drought, yes. We get rain, snow, but you know, it's not enough to make up, you know, what we used to get. I want to get in this canyon. I'm so excited. These canyons date back to the pre-Jurassic time. Most of it was carved out by rain, flash floods that come through here. I'm seventh generation. We've resided in this area for that many years. These canyons are home to us. So why are the walls created so smooth? This is cross bedding, layers of sand. This, this sandstone's petrified sand. Uh, Such so like a perfect line. They say it's like a, like a tree, when you cut a tree, you see the lines in them, mm -hmm. right? and it says the age and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the same idea as well. Yeah. You have, and this is like every thousands of years when you put your hand on type of thing is what right. they say. Wow. Antelope Canyon is a slot canyon in Arizona on the Navajo Nation Reserve. It's just south of Lake Powell, which is a water body formed by the Glen Canyon Dam in 1966. Lake Powell has become this essential water source for the West, but for the Navajo people who had lived there for centuries, it completely destroyed their way of life. And Lionel is the representative of this other side that we get to talk to. So yeah, we're from Los Angeles where we have a drought and water oh, crisis. Yeah. And you know, I think it's like Los Angeles and a lot of the West are these places built up where there wasn't really enough water naturally occurring, like they had to build all these dams. For the Navajo and for your family, what has been, you know, especially maybe for your grandparents, their perspective on the building of the dam and, and the creation of the lake? This, this dam was kind of pushed on them. It was something that, you know, they definitely didn't want. And mm -hmm. like I said, down in the riverbed, before it was Lake Powell, we had homes, we had cornfields, we had good vegetation for our sheep, cattle, horses. So, you know, we, we weren't for it, but, you know, pushed upon us, you know, to, to accept it is what, what was done. It's just evolution, I guess, you know, where we have to adapt to mm -hmm. what's coming in front of us and what's ahead of us is, is just adapting to it. So 
So uh, you guys gonna play inside of here too? I think we are. Reverb is crazy in here. Is man. it? Yeah. Powder in your hair, staples in your jeans, fireworks at the water. You were holy, a styrofoam cup held between your teeth. You're telling me how you're going to outlive your body. What you said, I wrote it down. It won't say, it won't speak. Down. 